Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Scripps Technical Forum. For those joining us for the first time, I will start with a brief background on the STF and for those who are regular attendees, it is nice to have you back. I'm Douglas Alden, a research and development engineer with the Center for Western Weather and Water Extremes here at Scripps. In addition, I function as the STF chair and get assistance setting up and running the STF from my colleagues here on campus, Gwen Nero and Vanessa Scott. Gwen is the Director of Corporate Affiliates, Business Development, Industry Outreach and Innovation, and Vanessa is an Industry Relations and Innovation Analyst. Please know that today's presentation is being recorded. You all have been muted when you logged into the conference. If you have a question for one of the presenters, please use the Q&A function or unmute. Today, we will have a presentation by Bhavan Shah from AnaConnect titled Electrical Circuit Design, Taking Lessons from Electronics Design Community, a Web Application for the Oceanography and Subsea Community. Bhavan is co-founder of AnaConnect, a web-based electrical circuit design application. Bhavan has worked at multiple subsea electrical connector manufacturing companies in the past. And AnaConnect is a startup in the oceans cluster. It's aimed at bringing proven web technologies to marine oceanography and subsea communities. I want to thank Bhavan Shah um, for joining us today. And uh, with that, I'll hand it off to you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for the, I would like to start with thanking um, Vanessa, Gwen, and Doug for giving me the opportunity here today uh, to present at STF. Um, so, Hi, my name is Bhavin and I'm the founder at AnyConnect. And the mission of our startup is to simplify product search for the oceanography, hydrography, and subsea community. And also once the product discovery is done, um, how do we capture that yeah, for the, how do we capture the electrical schema and the design of it? It's a web-based application. And um, uh, as a, so just for a little bit of my background, I was a manufacturing engineer at uh, Burton Electrical Connectors, uh, now owned by Eaton Corporation, and have consulted in a couple of companies uh, that developed uh, electrical connectors. So I have firsthand experience of how communication comes from the customer and the lack of good tools to send information back and forth. But this is not confined to uh, uh, only the electrical connectors. This, this has an industry-wide um, application. And so in the next 30 or 40 minutes, uh, we're gonna discuss what tools you have used in the past and see if we can partner to simplify that. Um, so it frees up more time for your research rather than doing product search or discovery of the product, right product and the design capture. So with that said, um, I'm gonna jump right into the, to the uh, presentation. And at any given point, you can raise the question. Uh, I want it to be interactive so you can uh, ask me questions at any time. I would like to know what you have used in the past. So please raise your hand to um, you know, if you have any questions or any comments about uh, as we go through the presentation. Some part of my presentation is a, is a, uh, a PowerPoint, and then we will transition into the uh, live demonstration of the product. So diving right in. So let me just, I don't know if you can see this, uh, so I was browsing through the site at Scripps and I found a couple of new and old pictures and clearly we have grown quite a bit. And as we have grown, our needs and change and the research topics have grown with us. And the products that are available to us for our research has also grown and become complicated. And so, for that purpose, um, you know, and I was just looking at the shift that we have seen over a period of years. Earlier, we used to have um, a PDF or a book-based catalog, and now we have Amazon or web-based catalogs. 
Now, so just a second. I don't know why this, there's a delay. Okay, so today we have a lot of PDF based catalogs from multiple companies. And within the catalog, there is a lot of variations that the products can offer. But we don't have anything to compare from the past, as in what was used in 2002 or 2000 is the same as what we are using today to search our product and to um, communicate our design needs. So if we look at the pattern change in what we see on Amazon or we see on other uh, retailing sites or other service-based providers, is that we can filter by parameters. We can say, I want to start my flight at a certain point and stop my flight or land at a certain point. It can lead us to a component so that we can buy a certain product uh, instead of searching for the whole thing. And then if you just have a part number and there's a specific need, you should be able to search it by the catalog. But is that all possible on a PDF? file uh, or from multiple vendors. So a question to think here uh, or a point to consider here is what company provides an electronic catalog where you can filter through the product? And for example, I want a three pin connector that works at a depth of uh, 20,000 PSI and has a, a metal shell uh, of certain kind. Uh, so what leads us to a product whereas have, without having to go through a bunch of PDF to understand what are the products being offered in multiple series. And if you know of any, um, any product, any company that does that very well on their website, um, please do write it on the chat or on the q and I would be very interested to know to find out what has worked for you in the past and where we can benchmark our, our application. Uh, moving on. So there was a very interesting post by a colleague of the, uh, an industry colleague. He used to work with uh, PEC Con for the East Coast. And uh, uh, this is sometimes in 2007, he's he mentions that when he used to engage people, he would draw this up in AutoCAD um, in early 2010s and 11s. Uh, so there is, um, and, and I quote him, I found this would prove extremely helpful because it removed the ambiguity where measurements were taken and usually any other technical questions that may come up, uh, due to only using something that was sketched onto a piece of paper. So this is an industry need, but this is limited to only rectangles and squares and nothing more. Um, if we can document this, but generally the tools for documentation, like uh, uh, tier one tools like SolidWorks and AutoCAD, Visio, PowerPoint, and sometimes you just describe it in an email. Uh, this was early 2000s and now in 2020, we still use the same tools. And uh, the question is, is there anything that is better out there that we can use to, to capture that information, make it cheaper, faster and better for us rather than staying with the old, um, old methods or tools that we used to have. And for the sake of example, I looked at the electronics industry. Now in 2000, they had these high-end tier one software, uh, very expensive, Cadence, Synopsis, and Tanner. Um, I think Tanner was before 2000, it was acquired before 2000. Um, but now if we look at the electronics industry, there is uh, circuit design applications, web-based circuit design applications, which you know, like Altium, EasyEDA, KeyCAD, and there are many others, actually there's a dozen of them now, which offer the schematic capture and the design application in 
uh, either for free or for sub $20 per month or um, a range in between. So for $240 what per, per year, you can have the same functionality that we used to have with Cadence um, or you know, close enough functionality with Cadence, um, which used to be a seven to $10,000 software, depending on the package that we take. So this has changed how the electronics industry has grown from where the capability to design was in the hands of few who can afford to hands of many where it's practically free to, to use. Hence, the, uh, it propels the innovation and the research to the next level. Now, uh, because we don't have to think about buying the software and the, and the talent that goes with it and the maintenance that goes with it, these only present wherever you open a web browser, you can use any of these applications. But something similar for the subsea industry does not really exist. These are very focused on the electronics and um, uh, they are not suitable for our industry. So I just put a little uh, slide together to understand why the existing tools that we have been using is not the best of the tools. CAD is great and actually it's a tier one software. It's very expensive, but it's an overkill. It, it does all kinds of things and does electrical work for us. So it has a very large application uh, of which electrical design and circuit design is only a small part. Um, it requires a lot of capital. Um, the, the systems requirement are higher, the maintenance requirements are higher, and the cost uh, or the drafting skills are also higher. Um, in the industry, while in the industry, we would have customers send us data over Excel sheets, saying pin one to pin five, pin two to pin seven, and then there is, they would, they would draw lines in between to draw connection or junction points. Um, and it communicated the message. And I'll give that to you, that the message was received. And, but there were questions back and forth on the email. Uh, we were, um, there were delays because the engineers would be busy with some other stuff and stuff like that. So Visio is good. It communicates graphically, but it is time consuming and we have to import pictures from this website and that website and the pictures wouldn't match. And the email is just too wordy, it just uh, does not describe exactly how we want it or what we want. Uh, what would we need in an application where there are two things we are looking for in an application that would help us with the, with the ease of finding the product and also ease us with the uh, design application. So it should be accessible, economical, efficient. Uh, it should be engaging. It should be collaborative now that, you know, everything uh, is instantaneous collaboration instead of an email and then somebody replying to the email after a couple of days. Uh, and undeviating, um, meaning it should not deviate from the CAD application that we are used to. The graphical format that we are used to from the CAD application it should nearly match it. it. It cannot be drastically different than what we have um, learned in the past. And so <clears throat> for that, I'm interested we are, any questions so far? Can I, can I see if there's any questions? No. Is that the only place we can find? Yeah, I don't, I don't see any questions uh, right now, but if anyone has a, a question, um, either you can put it into the Q&A box that's down in the lower part of your screen or just uh, unmute yourself and, and uh, we'll be glad to um, address them as they come. So I think there is one raised hand if we want to um, unmute Sarah. All right. All right, Sarah, go ahead. Sarah, you are on mute. There you go. 
Sarah. We're having trouble hearing you, Sarah. So if you want, why don't you just put the question into the, the Q&A and uh, we'll try and answer it through those means. It's accidental. So you can go oh. ahead. She, she can raise your head her hand by accident. Sure. So um, so moving on, so introducing AnyConnect. Uh, this is a cloud-based application uh, inspired by other industries that have transitioned to web-based applications for design. Um, uh, so anywhere you have a computer and you feel the need for design or searching a product, uh, you can. Uh, of course, it's far, far more economical than what a CAD software would be. Um, now, of course, the company buys the whole package from Microsoft, so it's not exactly uh, comparable, but uh, for the CAD application, it is very economical. Um, it is very, very efficient because there's no CAD models or CAD software needed. Uh, you don't need the drafting skills or person who can draft it. Um, it. It's all like a bunch of Lego pieces put together already on it. And uh, you drag and drop across the screen to design what you need and a bunch of clicks to find the product that you need. It guides you into it or you can know the manufacturer and the series and then keep going further into it. Uh, it has an exactly CAD-like output and there is no deviation from CAD-like output that we are used to seeing. Now, all of this is, I, I wanted to uh, uh, stress here that this is a design-only application. There is no product to be purchased. There is no, from the site, once designed, you still maintain that relationship with the existing vendor, take the design application design that you have and take it to the vendor and buy as you would normally buy. This is just to ease the design and the search of a product, um, not to uh, buy the product from the, from the, from any kind. Of, I mean, you would still maintain your existing relationship with your customers or vendors. Um, <clears throat> All right, so as for the product, the catalog, right? The, what are the features that the catalog offers is any manufacturer that's offering product in the oceanography and subsea industry can add their product to the catalog. They, they can add it as a personal item, send us an email saying, we are the owners of this product and we'd like to, um, uh, make the product publicly available for everyone to see. And within a couple of clicks, those products are available for everyone to see. We just keep that um, step to make sure that the, lo the person who's loading the product is an authorized person to load the product and they actually own and they're categorized well and stuff like that. So the product, the catalog is an open source. Anybody can add any product to it. So there is no cost involved in the IT aspect of it for any manufacturer. It just uh, uh, scales for all manufacturers and products. Um, any category of product can be added. I mean, we have started as a startup, we have started with connectors and cables and things, but it is not restricted. It, it can expand to cameras and sonars and other tools that are used in the industry. Um, it's an highly it's a highly scalable product for use by the whole industry. And right from the catalog, we once you like the product or or see what you like, you can extend that into the design application and create an electrical design and a schema for the product. Now I've just put a JPEG for the for the uh, catalog here, and in a in a few minutes we'll go to a live demonstration of the product of the site. Uh, on the schema or on the, on the design application, after the product selection is done, you can 
to come up to the, the design application. And here you can capture the drawing, the schema, uh, you can add your logo, uh, the, the, the designer and go through the approval processes, um, the revisions, the, if there are tabulated lengths, so, you know, there is the same cable, but for three feet and five feet and nine feet, and you don't want to create new drawings, there's tabulated lengths you can have. And you can also have a bill of material if you happen to um, uh, want that for whatever purpose. I mean, uh, sometimes from an end user perspective, you might not see the need for it, but I've seen salespeople who engage uh, end users use this feature a lot. So um, let's say you were collaborating this with a, a uh, sales engineer from uh, a XYZ connector company. You can share this application with them and they will be able to suggest the products, design the application here and generate a bill of material. Now this generation of bill of material might not be as important for uh, you as an end user, but that allows them to come up with a quote much quicker for you instead of having to go to their engineering department and, and get the drawings done and stuff like that. So um, that feature is uh, probably very useful for the uh, sales teams that collaborate with you. So I'm gonna just go uh, dive into the web, uh, the live demonstration of the website. Um, the website address is anyconnect.io. Uh, any questions so far? I don't see any hands raised or any questions. Okay. Right. Uh, so, you know, being engineers, we are not the greatest at marketing. So uh, the landing page is not the best that we can come up with, but the, the engineering aspect of it is just great. Um, and uh, we started this company about two and a half years back, and we have cataloged up to um, uh, 2,600 connectors or 2,500 plus connectors, uh, quite a few cables that are used in the industry, and then also um, uh, some cable split junctions and so, we started out with uh, focusing for a industry and focusing on the small um, aspect of the industry, which was the cables and connectors. And we have taken that and made it scalable where uh, now you can have all the products uh, within the industry and preferably for us also expand out from this industry to telecom or other industry. So I'm just going to go through a quick navigation um, within the site. You don't have to have a, a login for it, you, you know, just for the product search. Um, we, can, we can actually do it without uh, logging in. So uh, just for the uh, simplification, these are the parts that we already have. These are the manufacturers and based on the manufacturers, uh, I think most people are more familiar with Subcon or with Seacon, and uh, I'm just going to start with Subcon, um, if that's okay. So as we go into the manufacturer, it says select the series of the connectors that you want, or you can navigate back uh, yeah, the micro low profile, or actually the circular seems to be a better choice. It's widely used. Um, and you, as you can see, there are uh, cards that flip and the details of the connector is on there. Um, now, if I go pick a specific one, it'll give me the, the connector. Some places we have the 3D model, some, some places we don't, but it'll give you all the details. What are the options available in it? What are the mating connectors, the locking sleeves that go with it? And the most important thing is, if you still want to see the manufacturers uh, link uh, or the product data sheet, you can uh, click on the link and it will take you to the data sheet for the product for the manufacturer. So the, the information is a direct uh, input from the manufacturer. Now, 
assuming that you like what you have seen, you can uh, run the product and you can go back to the design application. I just want to go back to the, the catalog piece once, just so that was the navigation part of it, uh, which, which is good because it leads you into the product as we navigate further. Uh, other aspects like uh, MCIL, uh, dash four, and you'll see that these are from Teledyne, um, McCartney, uh, and then I think there is a naming convention difference between McCartney and Seacon, so um, that's there. Now, that's the search if you already know the part connector name directly. Uh, if you uh, want to navigate, you can still navigate from here. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to, to filter stuff. So uh, we're gonna say the number of contacts we need is four and, uh, and the manufacturer we want is McCartney. Whereas, uh, and we want the connector series to be uh, microsecurity. So it, it's smart enough to know that if you've selected McCartney and four pin, these are the series that have a connector which, which can offer you the product that you're looking for. And so our choices have been reduced. Um, now I wanted to say that I want a contact of uh, socket, I want a socket side not the pin side. Now I have been reduced to three, three options. As you can see, there is um, uh, OM or the 4F or the BH. Now I know sometimes it doesn't matter. Here you might need help from the sales engineer to help you pick, but at least you have come up to the knowledge where uh, within a few clicks you have narrowed down to the product that you, you like. And though as I I said earlier, this is um, not only for connectors and cables, it's expandable to other manufacturers or other products. We are just in the process of getting more, more and more products listed on the site. So uh, I'm gonna quickly go up to the design application because we might run out of time. Uh, from the design application, for the design application, there are two ways to go up to the design application. One from here, or from the product itself. Um, I'm gonna go up from the design, uh, from, uh, from the thing. Now, if you log in, you can add your own logo. So you can add an SIO logo. You'll be able to download and, and uh, uh, you know, here you can use for free, that there is no cost to it. If you create a login and you want to store that information on a web server, uh, that we are providing, then there is a little cost to it, but um, uh, you can still design that, design the things that you want for uh, no cost if that's intended. Um, here, after logging in, the screen's a little different. Uh, you go up to the design application and you see, you start seeing some more features that uh, otherwise is not available for logged out users. Uh, here, I'm just gonna uh, start with naming the assembly, and this is most important, otherwise you'll not be able to save it. Naming the assembly um, test. Uh, and then we just have to save it. Uh, there are two aspects to it here, uh, the schematics and the engineering drawing. We just put the grid difference so you know which grid you're on. Uh, once you are on the grid, on the, on the drawing, we can add a component here, uh, MCIL or F, or we can navigate it similar to what we saw in the catalog where we say uh, McCartney, uh, microcircular, uh, micro, and then inline socket, and then we have the MCIL 4F. So if I click on it, it'll just add the connector up here. I'm just gonna add another one for the sake of uh, creating a whole assembly. So let's say it's an inline and then I'm gonna add the pin side to it. So, four. so now we have two connectors that come with a cable width 
uh, the dimensions and stuff. Uh, well, the, the images are here. Um, and we are going to add a cable split junction because these come as a whip and we want a, a junction in between. So uh, just for the sake of, uh, uh, so we're gonna say conical and one-to-one -one conical split. I'm gonna close the components out, uh, create a mirror image, um, drag my connectors in, in its place so I can draw them and make it look like a um, actual drawing. Uh, there are two control points on this. So um, it's very simple to navigate, uh, very simple to, to move them. And at the end of it, just create a connection between the point and the connector. Uh, there'll be a big green dot behind it. Um, and I'm gonna connect this to the Now, the other end of this cable comes up here. And um, got it. Yeah. So, Anyway, so the point is that I can move my control points, make it look exactly like I would like on a drawing. Uh, I'm gonna move on just for the sake of time here. Um, I can add the dimension lines. So this cable, what is a 10 feet and two inches, the color of the cable is blue, and I want to show the dimension line. Um, similarly here, The dimension line is kind of hidden up here. Um, move and rotate the dimension line as we would like. Uh, you get the idea that you can actually draw the cable just as if it was a CAD drawing. Um, now you can add more specifications to it, saying I want a um, uh, tested at 10,000 psi for one hour in salt water. Uh, revision would be an initial revision. Uh, date would be 7 2020 and upload by. So as you see, as you enter the data, the test specifications, the revisions, all of that gets added to the drawing. Uh, I'm going to quickly switch to the schematics for it uh, so we don't miss that part. This is the connector, the cable with, that goes with it. Um, the, again, the connector and the cable with, that goes with it. Now, the reason we have kept it separate is sometimes there are connections that are done differently within the cable with. But generally, if it's the same, you can just uh, connect it one on one. Uh, again, here, the connections are done uh, just by dragging and dropping. Select the one that you need. Um, let's say we want to make a junction point. We just create a junction point here, and it creates the wiring diagram for us. Now, I can, I can actually select the wiring diagram and make it red and uh, trace the color yellow. Let's see. Um, we got a couple of questions that are that have come up. The first oh. is, uh, what business arrangement does Anyconnect have with Teledyne, McCartney, et cetera? Does this improve the sales flow, i.e., can I order directly from Anyconnect? Right. So we, as I said earlier, we don't have any business arrangements with any of these manufacturers. Um, you can take the drawing, you can download these drawings, um, absolutely and take it, share it with their sales engineer online to help them collaborate. They, they would have their own logins and they'll help collaborate the drawing. Um, but you cannot buy the product from any kind. There is no, uh, we, we are not a distributor. They have their established uh, distributors. And so if you take this to Brock Rosenthal or to, I don't know, uh, whoever is the representative for McCartney, uh, or for Teledyne, they'll be able to, um, you know, 
be able to take it from here and get the set, the bomb and stuff done for you. Uh, well, so can I make my cable drawings public on your site similar to GrabCAD? There are options to make it public, yes. Uh, we would uh, notate on the drawings and this was designed by such and such person uh, and you would be able to, uh, it, you know, you'll be the owner of the drawing, this is the person who's drawn it, and then if there is someone else who would like to use it, they will, they will be able to use your drawing directly. So there is options, but there, it's a manual process. You design something and then you send us an email saying, I want to make this public and we'll make it public for you. Just to make sure that there is no, um, and there is a small delay in it, but just to make sure there's no proprietary information uh, or some information that is not to be published is not on there. Uh, how do I use any connect and I have no internet connection? So it is a web-based and a cloud-based application. Uh, you would probably not be able to use it without the internet connection. We are using, we are planning on going to the point where, um, uh, you know, it's a desktop application too, but since the models are stored on the cloud application, uh, you even though you would get the application uh, on the site um, and you would be designed, able to design your custom connectors and stuff like that on it, but you wouldn't be able to use the models from the web because it is a cloud-based application. So uh, I don't know how, how it would be useful without internet connection. Does that answer the question? Okay. So, so basically you can draw the engineering drawings, the, the schematics for it, um, add the specifications, the tabulated data and all of that. The bill of material, you can load it and it will say that you have a MCI 4F, 4M, and then 10 feet of the cable and uh, units are still to be loaded. Now, there are a few things that I'd like to say, like share via email. Once you have saved it, you can, you can share it with your vendor uh, and ask them to collaborate. They'll be able to make the changes or suggest changes online. Uh, you can download, there are two things to here. Um, you can download the engineering drawing SVG. So right now we can offer only the SVG, but, uh, uh, and then you say print on it and it converts to PDF. So we are still working to get the PDF format instead of the SVG format. For the time being, we only have SVG. Hopefully in a month, we'll go to PDF. If you want to download the schematics, you can go and download the schematics SVG and, um, and print it. So the SVG just, op just opens on a web browser. Just uh, any SVG would open. Any web browser will do it. And we just go and print it uh, to, the, to the requirement we have. Uh, uh, just, uh, just a page size with it, and then, then that's about it. So, <clears throat> that's that. So you can print it, absolutely the drawing is yours. Uh, commercially, um, uh, absolutely you own it. Uh, the AnyConnect logo is just to put something in there, uh, but if you, if you create a login, you can put your own logo and that will still be yours to use. Um, so I, I hope I've gone through specifications, revisions, the title block, uh, you know, the designer can enter the data and the approvers can enter the data and, uh, uh, you know, whoever has verified it. Um, yeah, there are some other tools that we can use. Uh, let's say uh, there are tools like if we, if we wanted to have a section drawn and we didn't have the space for it, there are some other tools around uh, around it uh, to go about and you know make it look exactly like a CAD file for for your uh, design application. So I'm not going to go into each one of the tools, or I'll run out of the questions and answers, or at any any other uh, things that you have. Uh, we do ha offer, uh, you know the application is free to use if you're not creating a login. And if you don't create a login with it, the way it works is that whatever drawing you create is accessible by your email address. So uh, let us say if I were to create a drawing 
and I have to enter an email address. Once you enter the email address and the and the assembly name, uh, say saved, the the drawing will now be accessible only via your email address and not via the login. If I had login, then I can have all my uh, uh, cables in one area, and then it'll give us a summary of okay what were the old cables and you know I can access it anytime via the via the thing. Um, there are one of the things is that you know we want to add a lot of videos. <laughs> we only have one video so far, but we hope to add more and more and more. Um, some people have asked us questions. Can you add a connector which is not on the library? So absolutely. As a user, you can create a uh, create your own connector, and it will show up on the library. The connector that you create, or a cable you create, or any part that you create, will be accessible only by you. Um, but, well, first is you have to log in to do it. Uh, you can create your own connector, add to the database, but that connector will not be seen by others. Uh, you have to uh, use that connector for yourself. So any connector or cable, you can absolutely add that to your own profile if it's not in our library. And it's a very simple web-based form. So I can just say manufactured by and I can enter the series. Uh, there's only few uh, required items and the detailed structure for it. So what the cable looks like, let's say it's a coax or a standard connector. Um, you have three conductors on it and those are 16 gauge uh, wires or yeah, conductors. Uh, these are not needed. If you add it, it's just for your own purposes. Um, now the classifications are kind of important. Uh, it's a multi-conductor or, or a single element. And uh, th this classification is not necessary, but it's good if you are transitioning that. Uh, it will help you with the filtering process. So you can absolutely have your own uh, 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 component, like the connectors, cables, locking sleeve, whatever. If you don't have it in the library, you can add yours and it will uh, generate the schema for it and you'll be able to use the schema. The image for it might not be instantaneously available, but we can see if somebody has added a connector that they like, we'll look up what the manufacturer is for it and then add the product uh, uh, image to it after the fact. Uh, we might not have it all of it on the on the library. So if I were to just do this, I, the, the cable would be added and um, it'll create a, a cable on the schema diagram with three conductors on it. Uh, uh, we had a couple more questions that came up. Oh, okay. Uh, the tool will require investment of engineering hours on our part, and we want to make sure the tool is around for more than a uh, few years. Yeah, so this is, uh, we have been around for two and a half years, and this is a fully funded, uh, not, not a fully funded, it's full, completely funded by, by the uh, owners, uh, by, uh, I'm the founder, there's a co-founder in San Francisco who does the web development and the web engineering, and there are two or three employees. So we have not exactly um, uh, funded by investors, um, but there is no leverage. There is no loaned out money from investors. So this will remain. There is no debt to it for us to close it down. It will remain uh, on online, you know, as long as we are around. Um, there is no pressure to say where are our returns and where is, um, uh, if we don't give enough returns and there is bankruptcy to file or anything. It's completely owned by us. So there is nothing to um, worry about whether your uh, tools will be available for you after some time or not. And uh, I, did I answer that question? Yeah, okay. And uh, do you plan on adding pricing metadata? Uh, no, we don't plan on adding pricing metadata. The reason being um, that is very fluid and and we have reached out to many manufacturers if they would like to, but they would not like to. Uh, the reason being they would like 
want to allow their distributors to give out that data and they uh, want the, wanted to have that flexibility uh, with their distributors that they can code higher or lower based on customization or just based on the availability of the product. So pricing metadata is not on the cards for, um, for the components. Yeah. <clears throat> Any, anything else? So, where was I? So there is some just getting started guide on how the browser works, how the product works, where you can add the, the logo file, the data for your um, stuff and then it just browses through a lot of what we have gone as an online demonstration. Um, but I would rather take questions from you and I would like to ask, what can I do to improve the usability of the product and what can I um, add in the immediate needs so that you can start collaborating? What did I cover that was good and what would you like to see to make it more usable for you? So we, the, the floor is open for any question and for that specific question actually from me. I think you've developed a uh, great pro product. I mean, uh, um, I, having been involved in the industry for a very long time where you had to get faxes or send away for a catalog <laughs> from a company to get, get uh, information on their connectors, I mean, this is an amazing leap forward. Well, um, so th there are, there are um, other than connectors, cables, and um, of course, the whole, uh, all the components around a, a, you know, electrical cables in general. What are the components that are most um, difficult to browse through in terms of uh, technical information? And you wish that there would be a electronic way of searching multiple connector products in just uh, multiple products of multiple manufacturers in the same place instead of having to go through PDFs of each individual one. Is that something, some product category that comes to mind? Yeah, I mean, uh, from my perspective, um, I mean, a lot of the, like the pressure housing we use, most of those are, are either custom made and there are a few companies out there now that are, are they're selling uh, off the shelf housings, but um, that's not really a, a ubiquitous item. Um, and if, I, I like the, the functionality of your web space and being able to put the connectors together and build a build materials. I mean, being, add to, being able to add other components to uh, besides the cables, um, your own components, like if you if you did design a, a pressure housing and being able to add that, it'd be great. And then adding that to the bill of materials, I could see would be useful and fasteners and um, anything else that might might go on there. Um, it just it just kind of be able to. This is kind of one piece of the whole assembly. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see how the best way to to achieve that, but you do have the functionality. You can add your own connectors and maybe there's a way you can add other components to these assemblies to make it um, kind of whole. Yeah, absolutely. No, we, we are looking for feedback. We are looking for suggestions to, um, uh, so, so far what we have come up with is through our own imagination of what the customer wants. So what would be useful for someone at uh, SIO or in general in the industry. But uh, as we collect feedback, we're trying to make sure that the site is geared <clears throat> for the best experience for the user. And it's not dependent on our library. It's just a massive library of products that people can use. Um, I did forget to mention where, you know, you can add your own product, but if you think that it's going to be useful for the whole industry, um, uh, you can make it public. Just send us an email saying, I authorized to make it public and I'm, I am authorized to make it public, then we would just uh, switch it from a private domain to a public domain and then everybody can use it. Now, this is not, it's an all or none thing. So I cannot restrict it to the users of SIO. It has to be either private for one user in, in the uh, 
or it has to be for everyone, whether with the, they are within SIO or not within SIO. So, yeah, it, 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 the industry, this is an, it's like an open source platform where the more products we add, the more easier it will get for the industry to use it. Um, over a period of time, the database will be large enough to say, you know what, uh, uh, everybody, all manufacturers will be able to just add their own data to it. And it'll be easier for everyone in the industry to search and design their product. Great, well, uh, thank you, Bob. And I don't, I don't see any more questions at this time. Sure. Um, I'm going to share a, a, a slide just quickly. Sure. Or shall I stop sharing my screen then? I, I, I already took okay. care of that. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so thank you, Bhavan, for, I mean, that's a great product. Look forward to trying it out in the near future. And I just want to let everybody know that uh, um, you can find the technical forum at stf.ucsd.edu. We've got Regal Laser Measurement Systems upcoming in August, Geospectrum Technolog Te Technologics Incorporated in September, and Turner Designs in October. So, um, and if you have any other uh, uh, speakers you'd like to hear, please uh, reach out to one of the email addresses there and we'll help you out. But thank you again, Bhavan. It's been great. Uh, I'm really excited about your project. Th thank you, Doug. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Vanessa, and I hope I have answered a lot of questions. So if feel free to answer any, I mean, ask any questions by email. Um, I think I had my email on the first slide, but um, I, I'm sure Vanessa and Doug can also share my email with you. Sure, we'd be happy to, uh, you know, if you, anyone needs to get in, in contact with Bob and just let us know, we'll, we'll hook you up. Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, and maybe we'll meet in person some other day. <laughs> All right, yeah, All right. take care.